The menstrual phase is your inner winter. It's your built-in rest system. Time to slow down, go inward, and just relax. Hey friends, if you're new here, my name is Cece and welcome to my little corner of the internet where I share things about my life and the things I'm learning to inspire you and to help you grow into the best version of yourself. Over the last few weeks, we've covered in depth the phases of the female hormonal cycle, the follicular phase, the ovulatory phase, the luteal phase, and now we're going to dive into the menstrual phase our lovely little bleed every month. <laughs> and if you've been cycle syncing and balancing out your hormones, your bleed should actually be a really peaceful, relaxing time of your cycle. It should not be painful. It should not be horrible. It should be really lovely and relaxing. I absolutely love my period. I feel like I'm just so clear headed during my period and I absolutely love the relaxation. What a great excuse to sit on the couch for hours and read my favorite book or watch my favorite show on Netflix or just sit on the couch and snuggle with my man. Like, yes please, thank you. <laughs> it's such a nice time, I love it. <laughs> so today we'll talk about the same topics as the last phases. What is the menstrual phase? What's going on with your hormones and your body? what to eat during the menstrual phase, how to exercise, how to work, what's your superpower and your fertility. What is the menstrual phase? Well, this is the time that you're actually bleeding. And this is the phase that most of us know about and are aware of. I for sure knew nothing about the other phases before I started learning about cycle syncing and healing my hormones and having healthy, happy periods. So what's going on in your body? As the egg gets reabsorbed into your body, progesterone, is gonna drop down. And this will signal your body to start shedding the endometrial lining. Estrogen also plummets right before the bleed to signal the hypothalamus to get ready for a new cycle. What to eat in the menstrual phase? Think warm, cozy foods like soups and stews. Your hormone levels are at their lowest levels in your menstrual phase, but you can kind of compensate for that by the way you eat by increasing your protein and your healthy fats. Also continuing to focus on nutrient dense foods like red meat, kidney beans, things like that. Blueberries and blackberries add really good fiber and antioxidants during the menstrual phase. Seafood is really good like scallops and oysters, sardines, things like that. And seaweeds like kelp and wakame. So it's time to take yourself on a nice seafood date. It really helps to remineralize the body with zinc and iron, which you're losing a lot of during your menstruation. Red raspberry leaf and peppermint tea also help with digestion and help with cramps. So if you do experience any of those, add these teas to your cupboard. And I have a full food list linked in the description, so be sure to check it out. How to exercise. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, your period is like your built-in rest system. Your hormones are at their lowest levels, therefore so is your energy. So it's really, really, really important to take a rest, take a break. If you really wanna exercise, do not do hard cardio or heavy lifting or anything that is too intense because your body is gonna start to go into that fat storing mode. There's actually no need to even work out at all during your period, especially on the heaviest days of your bleed. But if you do feel like you wanna get some movement in, I would recommend going for a nice stroll, a very slow walk around the block or something. Doing some really nice stretching yoga can feel really good on your body, especially if you do experience any cramping or pain during your period. Maybe a little bit of breath work could feel nice as well, or just take a nap. Just take a nap and call it your exercise for the day. <laughs> it counts, I promise. <laughs> All right, on to how to work and what your superpower is. So during your menstrual phase, your communication between your left and right brain is actually stronger and more powerful than in any other time. This inner communication enables you to wisely look at your life, your career, 
your relationship, what you're doing with your life, all of these really big things and analyze it in a better way. Use this time to reassess your goals and reassess your life. Do you want the same things that you wanted last month or the same things that you wanted last year? Ask yourself these questions about evaluation of, of your life and your career and your goals. This is a really, really good time to make use of that powerful connection in your brain right now. With that extra connection in your brain, your intuition is also so strong at this time. What are those subtle messages trying to tell you about your career, about your life, about your goals, about the project that you're working on? Really tune in and listen to what your intuition, what your gut is telling you. It's so much more heightened at this time. Definitely a huge, huge superpower along with that analysis and evaluation. Those are your superpowers during the menstrual phase. Lastly, fertility. Your cervical fluid during this phase is obviously the blood. <laughs> and healthy blood should look like cranberry or cherry red and there should be no clots. Any other color or heavy, heavy bleeding or clots in your blood are all signs of a hormone imbalance. Now, technically you're not fertile during your bleed, but if you ovulate early, early in your cycle, and you have unprotected sex during your bleed, and because of that sperm life, you potentially could get pregnant. So for example, Let's say you bleed on days one through five of your cycle and you ovulate on day 10. Well, maybe on day five of your cycle, you had unprotected sex and that little spermy lived inside you for five days up until your day 10 ovulation. Therefore, you technically could get pregnant. This is why it's super, super, super important to track when your ovulation is and use protection during those days that you are close to your ovulation. Now, it's not super common to ovulate on day 10, but it's definitely possible. And there are ways to move your ovulation back if that is something that you are interested in. Again, so make sure you are just tracking your ovulation days. Make sure that you are using protection when you are close to your ovulation. And you should be a be good to have unprotected sex during your bleed, but only if you want to, of course. <laughs> all right, babes, that wraps up this little series about all of our beautiful phases of our menstrual cycles. It is so cool to be a woman and have this cyclical nature to us, have all of these different superpowers that we get to harness the energy of and honor our body and get to know our bodies in ways that is just so powerful and so cool. And I'm just kind of obsessed with it. <laughs> I hope you guys like these videos. If you did, please give them a like and a subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you guys soon. Ciao.